These are Game Boys, and these are Minecrafts. I want to put this on this, so the first thing I have to do is buy a blank Game Boy cartridge that I can load my own code into. I also had to buy this adapter that lets me connect it to my computer. Now, Game Boys have a very limited memory supply, so I had to pick out which Minecraft features I thought were the most important. I chose the ability to break blocks, the ability to place blocks, the ability to store items in an inventory, the ability to craft tools, the ability to fight enemies, and most importantly, the ability to go fishing. Obviously. If that sounds like a lot of features to put on one Game Boy cartridge, you're right, I have no idea if this is possible. But now that we have a plan, we need to get started. The first thing I did was draw a bunch of different sprites for various blocks and characters I think might be in the game. I downloaded a program called GB Studio, which makes coding Game Boy games super easy, and I decided to make the game in a kind of top-down Pokemon style to fit the Game Boy feel. So let's start coding! The first thing I decided to add was a movable character, and luckily for me, GB Studio already had a preset for this, so I really didn't have to do that much work. Look at him go! But now that we have a way to interact with the world, we can get started on our first Minecraft feature, an inventory system. The reason I chose the inventory system first is because you can't really pick up or place blocks if you don't have them stored somewhere, so that seems like a good place to start. The first thing I did was, well, draw the inventory screen. I decided that we should only have a max size of 4 for the inventory, because that gives us 16 unique tiles to work with, and the Game Boy can't really hold much more than that. So now that we have an openable inventory screen, the next thing I have to do is figure out how to load information into it. Burger. I tried to simply just copy the tiles the player was standing on into the inventory slot, but Game Boys are very technical and everything you do with its memory has to be perfect, because if you're not perfect, then this kind of stuff happens, and this is not what I want to happen. So, oh boy. Also, you may have noticed that it's filling all four inventory slots. Yeah, it's only supposed to fill the first one. I learned that whenever I replace a tile on the screen, it replaces every similar tile on the screen. So I had to change the inventory texture to give each slot its own unique tiles. Now I can edit each slot individually. I also changed it so that it reads the block in front of Steve instead of the block he's standing on. Or at least it tries to. I'm working on it. We'll figure it out. But after some research, I realized something. I am stupid. In GB Studio, when you type in this style of code, you have to press enter after typing a variable name or else it doesn't turn green. And if it doesn't turn green, you're a loser and you should hate yourself. I thought I was finished for like one millisecond, but then I noticed that some of the blocks further down in the tile set copied the wrong tiles, which meant that something was wrong with the tile set I drew. I put it into this website that shows duplicate tiles, and would you look at that? It has duplicate tiles! <laughs> The reason that matters is because it tries to minimize the amount of tiles it has to use. So if I have duplicates somewhere, it takes them out and then pushes everything up, which makes everything out of organization. So I took out any duplicate tiles I could find, and of course, that fixed it. And I also changed the background to be a nice little house, just so you guys have something more pleasing to look at. Other than me, of course. So at this point, we are now able to successfully copy the block in front of Steve. We just need to remove it after we copy it to look like he's picking it up. And this is where I ran into my first hurdle. Remember earlier when I said I couldn't replace tiles in the inventory without replacing every similar tile? Yeah, I didn't remember that. I forgot that one. Whenever I tried to replace a block with the ground tiles to simulate picking it up, it replaced every single similar block on the screen. Because of course it did, because I'm stupid and I forgot how Game Boys work. And also, since the inventory runs through a separate room, every time you close the inventory, it resets the room you're in. Which means if you change blocks, it's gonna undo everything you just did. So this left me in a very tough position, where I only had two ideas left, and if neither of them worked, this would not be possible. The first idea I thought of was to just make every single square on the screen an entity, and that interacting it could change which sprite it's using. But the Game Boy can only have 12 entities on a screen at a time, including Steve. So this is just literally not possible on a Game Boy. I should actually specify, I'm working specifically on a Game Boy Color right now, which is like the worst of them. Like if I used a Game Boy Advance, it could probably do that. But a Game Boy Color? That's a little bit harder. Which left us with only one idea left, and if it didn't work, we would have to cut out breaking and placing blocks from our Minecraft game. 
which just sounds horrible to say. Ugh, blah, blah. But this final idea was to cover the entire Game Boy screen in unique tiles. That way I could edit any tile I want and it wouldn't affect anything else. Now that sounds like, oh yeah, that's the solution, that'll work. Except for the fact that the Game Boy can only have 256 unique tiles loaded at a time. And half of those are already taken up by our tile set and the text and different UI stuff, which meant we do not have enough tiles to fill the entire screen. But what if we didn't need to? You see, when I first played Minecraft, it was just a free little browser game with a really tiny world and like no blocks to pick from. But I loved it. It was great. So I got an idea. I can split up the game into two different game modes. One where it's a really small game where you can just build whatever you want. And another one where you can do all the Minecrafty tool and fishing things. I am a genius. So now that I had a really solid plan for how to get everything done, it was time to start on the creative mode. First of all, we can't do the separate inventory we had for the adventure mode because it'll reset the screen every time you check your inventory. So instead, I'm just gonna have one slot at the bottom of the screen and everything will run through there. I decided to implement a very complicated system I designed that I like to call pressing the B button. Now you see, in this, this very complicated system, when you press the B button, it changes what block is in the inventory. This is crazy and revolutionary. But that's not all. That led me to a second, even more complicated system I like to call pressing the A button. Wow. In this system, when you press the A button, whatever block is at the bottom of the screen, it places in front of Steve. I might just change gaming forever. Gaming will never be the same. It's actually surprisingly fun because since it places in front of Steve, you have to constantly figure out how to maneuver in a way to place the blocks where you want. And also, if you place a block while you're moving, you can place blocks outside of the grid, which I was gonna remove, but I thought it was kind of funny and gives you a lot more to do, so I left it in. And with that, our creative mode is now officially complete, leaving our final task with the adventure mode. The adventure mode's going to implement our crafting, combat, and fishing features. But it still felt weird making a Minecraft game where you can't do anything with blocks, so I decided to add push blocks to add some kind of puzzle to the game. So with that one done, our next feature was crafting. In order to craft, you need to get the resources for the crafting recipe. And I decided the easiest way to get resources was to hide a bunch of chests throughout the map that whenever you find them, you get part of what you need to craft the next tool. And then once you have the resources, all you have to do is find a crafting table and click on it, and it will automatically make a tool out of whatever it can. And since I had so many different tools in the game, that meant I also had to draw sprites for every combination and numerical amount of the resources you could get, and make sure it always works out in that order. And boy, was that tedious, but I mean, hey, it works and it's in the game. And so now with all four tools completely added to the game, all we had to do was implement fishing and combat. I did fishing first because it was super simple. Every time you activate the fishing rod, it just gives you a random text box of whatever you caught. That's easy. So with fishing done, the only thing we had left for the adventure mode was adding enemies. So how this works is that I just made a separate entity that's a little zombie guy that walks around all slow and he just walks towards you in whatever way he thinks is best. The hazard is that if he gets too close to you, he'll hit you and kill you, which sends you back to your house. But if you have a sword made, you can hit him back. And in order to kind of make it look like Minecraft, whenever you hit him, he like moves backwards a space. I don't know, it looks awful, but it's the closest I could do in GB Studio. <laughs> And just like that, our enemies are done. Although I also tried to add in sound effects by importing the Minecraft ones onto the Game Boy VGM format, but they sounded like the noise I make when I stub my toe. So I talked to some experts and they said there's not really a way around that unless I try to make the sound effects myself, but then it won't really be the Minecraft sound effects. And I thought more of an all or nothing style. And so if I couldn't get the exact sound effects I wanted, I didn't want to make fake ones. So I just didn't have sound effects. At this point, I had fully completed my Minecraft Game Boy game and was ready to transfer it onto physical hardware. I took out my physical Game Boy cartridge and, oh, it's literally an empty cartridge. There's nothing in here. So I decided instead of trying to figure out this and buy a bunch of other things, I would just wipe one of the games I already had and put my game on there. Except when I put them in the GB operator, it wasn't reading any of my games. But then I found out the reason. I wasn't blowing on them. 
So once I did that, it actually read all of my games, but they were all read only, which meant I couldn't actually edit them. I couldn't believe it. It actually worked. I just made Minecraft as a Game Boy game. But you guys don't want to watch me play my own game. Oh, it's so fitting. Oh, the creeper face. Is there like a, a map or an objective if I do adventure mode? Uh, yes. So adventure mode, your goal is to mine diamonds. And creative mode, your goal is to have fun. <laughs> Okay. All right. Uh, speed run time. Got to got to learn how to play the game. Okay. That's how you open up the door. Oh, you found eight sticks. Okay. Nice. You need a pickaxe. <laughs> God dang it. Um. I assume I gotta go to the next screen. Oh, hello. Wait. There's block pushing. Can I push me into the water. Hey, Steve. It's me, Steve. I am Steve. This is like Jack Black talking to original <laughs> Minecraft Steve. Don't forget to press start to open your inventory. It also resets puzzles. Ah, I see. A little little RAM reset arena. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. I swear to God, I was able to push that before. Can I not? Wait, can I push here? With Game Boy, you can't move and press A at the same time. You have to stop moving to press the A button. Oh, oh, I see, I see. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Can I move these? I have an idea. Yeah, let's go. You figured it out. <laughs> that is the speed run way to do it. I made it. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> okay, so crafting table. I recognize this block here. You crafted an axe. Yeah, let's go. Let's, let's go. go. You can't reach it. Oh, I can't reach. I'm too short. This is like real life. It fits too close to home. Just, just, just so I can do it once. I just, I gotta do it. I gotta do it correctly there you once. Go. Oh, look at that inventory. Look at, look at that axe there. Beautiful. And then there, and then, hey, now he knows what he's doing. Solved it. Go. Hey, what do we got down here? Another crafting table. I don't think I have any. This looks like a great place to um catch some tentacruels or a lapras, maybe. Yeah, that makes sense. Or salmon or cod, you know, whatever. Steve. What are you doing here? What do you have to say? I'm hungry. Am I gonna have to fight him? Is he like my rival, like Gary? Yeah, I hope your uh, your Pikachu's high enough level. I wish I had one raw salmon. I'm hungry, sad face. I wish I had one raw salmon. Yo, we're gonna get to fish. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Steve, on the other side of that log right there, there's so much salmon. You cast your rod. Nothing. Oh, unfortunate. What the heck? Well, you see, Steve, it just so happens that I have one here in my back pocket. Just caught them, super fresh. Here you go, no problem. Perfect. <laughs> Yummers. Yummers, he says as he no clips through the wall. What the frick? Why can't of I course. do that? Excellent. Uh, oh, oh, there's a freaking zombie. Parkour. You found five iron ore. Pro dodging. Get out of here. There was a crafting table in here. Oh God, I gotta, wait, do I choppy choppy? No, stay away. Oh, 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 go. This is unfortunate. Yeah. You got five iron ingots. Do, nice. do, 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 do. So it's just, this is a puzzle while I'm on the clock. Oh my God. Oh, wait, this, this doesn't seem good. Oh, yo, yo, <laughs> path them into a corner, get wrecked. You crafted a sword. You can now uh, attack zombies. I assume that happens automatically. Yep. If I had to guess. Oh, he's about to get wrecked. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, he's done. Oh, flawless. I trampolined him off of me. That was insane. <laughs> also interesting. If this were playing on a Game Boy right now, be a little bit of lag right here. You can even see like, <laughs> Oh goodness, I can actually see the, the mineable interactable blocks versus the non ones yeah. when I move and I can see it like real quick. That That's so classic Game Boy style. Struggles to keep it up. Okay, you, you can't hit me. Yeah, I get wrecked. You used your pickaxe. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Wait, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh gone, easy. bro. We got ourselves a little puzzle Rooney here. Um, I can tell that I'm gonna need to push these blocks. Push any, oh yeah, I can, wait, no, but I can only push it. Oh, I can push it twice. Oh, a new one. mechanic. New mechanic. Oh my god. Die, zombie. Die. I'm the master of Minecraft on Game Boy now, which is not a title that I thought I would ever have. You are became winner. You are became winner. That's you a diamond. You the diamonds. 
God, you that does it. look like diamond right there. You are became winner. I, you I, became I, winner. I, ju I just said that I became the master of Minecraft on Game you Boy. Did. This is proof right here. All right, so now if you accept it, it'll put you in the creative mode. Oh, okay. Oh, that changes the block. I guess a crafting table in my wall works. <laughs> what is happening? Wait. <laughs> You're being creative, man. Yeah. <laughs> but I just realized, why did I make my house out of bricks when I can make my house out of diamond? Ooh, good call. Exactly. Like, so short-sighted. Yeah, there let's go. go. Let's go. <laughs> Very likely the first Among Us ever drawn on a Game Boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a great tree that I've I've beautiful got going on here. I'm Excellent. Some sense of perspective there. Yeah. Okay. Kind of. I have no purpose for doing this except for, except for just wanting to make the screen look really random. There is a secret sponge you can find. A secret, a secret sponge, you say? I think the mm -hmm. last time you sent me on a, a secret mission, I, I became enthralled by it as well. I got, yo! Thank you guys for watching. This was a super fun project and I have another even bigger project coming out very soon.